Charlie kept good on her word, which I knew she would do because that's what she does. That's why we love her so much. Charlie kept good on her word. <laughs> Like, come on, through, cookie. I want to put my soapbox. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag. guys thanks so much for click mm. hey guys thanks so much for clicking on the video this is my review for queen sugar this is season three episode eight and as i said charlie kept good on her word and i'm going to tell you about it as we go forward first things first um mr prosper has to move so charlie had come over to the house she's like what's going on here because the house he was supposed to be out that day the house hadn't been packed up so she says, Mr. Prosper, why didn't you just call us? And we would have come over. So she eventually, she tells him, you know, you go ahead. You go out to eat with I. He went to brunch with I. She called Ra and she called Nova and they got everything packed up. His sister was supposed to be coming down to pick him up. And he was going to go and stay with his sister. So um, all of that seemed like everything, you know, everything's cool. He's like, yeah, I took care of everything. It's all fine. And I was saying to myself, Hmm, something don't seem right. So Mr. Prosper goes down, he meets up with Aunt Vi, and he's having brunch and everything, and I'm still saying, something don't seem right. And Vi tells him, you know, your family, definitely if you need anything, you know you could actually come to us and you can actually, you know, you tell us and, and we'll make sure that everything is in order. Same thing's going on. Later on, he goes back. He's back over the house and sitting out. And he finally ends up telling Charlie that he didn't call his sister. He told her don't come. He didn't tell her to come because she has her own life. He's just going to go and rent a room somewhere. This, that, and the other. She has her own life. She has her own kids. And he doesn't want to be a burden on her and all of that. So Charlie, like I said, kept good on her words. She told her daddy. During that bonfire, I got him, and I'll take care of him. And that's exactly what she did. She told Mr. Prosper, you can't go run around. That just is not going to happen. I got a plan to actually, I'm trying to work to get your house back, but I need some time. But you just come on and stay with me and, me and Micah. No, 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 this, that thing, and the other. And then Charlie eventually told Mr. Prosper, listen, let me tell you something. I'm not leaving here without you. And he sat there for a minute. And then he looked over at Charlie and he told her, you are just stubborn, just like your daddy. And she said, well, thank you. And she took Mr. Prosper. She put his things in to storage. She took Mr. Prosper home to stay with her, Micah. Y'all can see on my face that I'm like happy with this. Like, don't mess with Mr. Prosper. I like Mr. Prosper. <laughs> so, Charlie kept good on her word. It was good. This was one of the happiest moments I've actually had since I got here. And Micah was very open. And he's like, hey, Mr. Prosper, I'm glad to have you here. And, you know, it just felt good good you know i watched and it it just felt good it really did i was i was happy about it. i was really happy about that um speaking of micah micah in this group i i just want to wring this group's neck i just can't with them i just see bad they are just bad news and micah is not a leader micah is very much a follower he's not a leader and I just, I just know something bad is going to happen when it pertains to those kids. It's like, Micah, go get back with Kiki and, and be with Kiki. Stick up underneath Kiki. Fall in love with Kiki and marry Kiki. You know, that's what you do. Find the, go get the little chocolate girl and eat her up, Patty. Don't just leave them alone because they're, they, they got part of a good message, but they're just, screwed up 
But anyway, they have this whole thing. They have this plan. They want to. They're upset about the, the Caucasian folks over at the plantation and what it is that they're doing. They feel like they're, you know, making fun of, you know, our lineage and, and they're taking selfies. And it's like they like they're glorifying what had actually went on. Um, in some ways they are, you know, and they they aren't. They're not people who are going there. They're not taking into account the whole slavery thing and all of that. They're going in and they're saying, oh, look at the costumes. Look at what they used to wear. And, you know, more like they're at a museum, which is what it's set up to do. And you all are just being real deep with it. And you're getting angry and you're making yourself angry. And now you're making dumb decisions. They took time about going and defacing the plantation so they can't make, you know, make money off because it was not pretty. It's not all prettied up. Then nobody will want to take pictures. So that's why we can go spray paint the name of the slaves that actually built that plantation and made it look pretty all over and all of that. Micah agrees to go along because she's trying to fit in. Follow her. And I'm like, Micah, you already know. We've seen a whole flashback montage of the time the little time he spends in jail. Now you're throwing stones into jail. You want to go back. Because that's what's going to happen. It's just stupid. And you know better. You know better. Ridiculous. Anyway. Okay, so let's go into a territory that I really hate to even talk about. And that's crackhead Mary, honey. That old Darla. Darla is on my last nerve. <sighs> Ra goes over to the house. And see, I'm ready to really eat them both up. I'm going to eat them both up because he's very immature as well. And so is she. Now, we all know she's being funded by her parents. And she actually has a job as well. But her parents are funding a lot of her stuff. It's a beautiful house. It's a beautiful house. She has a fix-up. Very, very nice. Um, and then the room that she did for Blue is just amazing okay it's amazing it looks like like going to the children's science center inside of this room she has for blue and darla where some of the intention is good you went over and beyond because you're being petty you're being petty and you're trying to compete with ralph angel for Blue's affection is what you're doing. It's very immature, but you're doing it. And we're sitting here watching you do it. You are purposely taking the things that Ra has provided for Blue and you're putting them on a 10 and you're doing it and you know that you're doing it. You know you're doing it because you're petty, bitch. You're petty. And then he's immature as well because he's getting caught up in the bullshit. And he's sitting around doubting himself and feeling bad about the fact that he can't compete. To the point that he is considering taking extra shifts at the job to try to provide some of these things that don't... Baby, that's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And in essence, it all unfolded later on with a conversation with him and Nova. Nova Nova clocked it. She picked up on it. She's like, honey, mm -mm. no, 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 no. Blue don't even care about that stuff. He is a kid. He cares about time with you. Don't fall into the trap. And then you wanting to do all of this extra stuff. Damn all that. And it went so far in this conversation they had. They sit down there on the floor in Blue's room. Blue's over spending time with Darla. They're over there and Ralph Angel's wallowing in his sorrow. And she got her own stuff going on. They're over there on a bottle of Hennessy. She finally ends up telling him, you trying to be just like Daddy. Daddy was trying to do too much. And damn near killed herself. Literally explained it all. Of course, he had a hard time swallowing it, just like she did, to even think that their dad, this strong man, 
actually contemplated suicide and all of that. And she's like, don't do it. Don't be like daddy. You're already, you're so much like him. You look like him and all of that. Don't do it. Don't do it. He was had the weight of the world on his shoulders. And she said, I, we're not going to let that happen. She said, you got me. You got Charlie. You got Mr. Prosper. You got Micah. You got Hollywood. You lean on us. Don't try to take everything on yourself. You know, when it comes to you and Blue, we're here for y'all. You ain't got the weight of the world on your shoulders. Do not repeat what daddy did. Do not work yourself into the ground. Do not put yourself into any type of a depression trying to provide things that this kid doesn't even care about. He doesn't care. And she told him, just stay the course. She, he, even because when him and Darla actually had gotten into this little heated argument where she got to tell him, because she keeps on throwing out more and more little, her little stuff. And I want 50%. I want to do like 50% custody of Blue. And he's like, no, it's too soon. Blue doesn't really know about all that right now and all that. Blue knows exactly about everything. Blue is enamored with the whole thought of his mother being around. So if, if give it a chance, he'll choose Darla over Ralph Angel. And Darla knows that. She knows that and she's playing on it. And I just want to wring her neck because in the long run, it's going to, it's going to screw up for Blue because Darla ain't shit. She ain't shit. She's still manipulating and carrying on and she got these smooth little moves that she's doing. We see you, Darla, bitch. You know, I, I just, I can't with her. I can't. I, I just, I can't. I can't any time where there is this so-called recovering crackhead trying to compete with people who who walk through the mud and the throw up in the shit with these little kids, and then you come back in and you try to infiltrate and try to cause trouble when you know your ass is not going to be right. If you were going to be right, that'd be one thing, but you know you're not going to be right. You know you're a selfish bitch, and you're just in there trying to pull rank because you think you can. I don't trust the whore any further than I can see her, and I feel that way about the character because I know what this looks like in real life, and it really does look just like this. Um, even when it's not a situation where you can't See, my issue, I didn't have an issue about uh, things and providing things. I could always provide more things, you know, for my children than their biologicals. But it was, it was never a thing with me. I never felt the need to compete, but the biologicals like it. They like it. It, it goes on to this day. My kids are 11 and 15, and the biologicals still would like to play the manipulative game of trying to compete because kids always want the one that's not there. They want, you know, they 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 are thriving for this love from this parent that is absent. That's just what kids do, and these people play these games and they do these things and they end up hurting these kids. And I'm telling you, it's it's very few times do I know when those people step back in who were in a position where they have walked off and left their children, where you take and have a baby and step over it, you shit it out on the floor and you step over it and you walk away. Very few times have I seen them come back and really take charge and really do something positive. No, I see them come back, cause more drama, and walk around with a sign on their forehead, I need my ass whooped. It's basically what I've actually seen and what my experience has been. Okay, so I'm getting off my soapbox and getting out of my business now, but I'm, 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 bam it, I'm back. And we will talk about Darla. Whore, you're no different. You're no different than what I've seen. I don't trust you. You look to be doing good right now, but you're still, you still have that, that that way about you. You're a manipulative, sorry whore. And I see you, bitch. I see you, and you're a problem. Very problematic, but whatever.
And Ralph Angel said, it is too soon, it's too soon, it's too soon. And it really is too soon for you because you're not ready to let go. And the bad part with their situation, there's that whole paternity thing that's in there. And I wish I could just put it in him to be able to be like that, that type of dude that just says, man, fuck you and your baby. Because I truly, what could we honestly say about Ralph Angel if he just got tired? If he truly just got tired. What could we really say about him? Absolutely not a damn thing because it ain't his baby. All of this started because of her manipulative, lying, sneaking, slimy, reptilian ways. So she she's playing all these games, but that's what she wants him to do. She really would like it if Ralph Angel would be the dirty, low-down guy and just say, you know what, here, take him and go. And, I, and, I, and, you know, there's a part of me that just wants him to just let Blue go. Just let him go. Like, let him go. Go over there with Trent. Go over there and knock Trent up and make you a, a, a beautiful, dark-skinned little uh, baby with chinky eyes and go to hell on about your business. You know, there's a part of me that wants him to do that. As much as we've fallen in love with Blue, and Blue's behavior is not helping. But Blue is doing what is age appropriate. But just watching it is not helping. It's just not helping. This whole piece of this, it just te it tears me trying to watch it. But whatever. Anyway, Darla even steps into that whole thing about the guy, you know, the, the little employee guy that he let live with them. I mean, she's just, every little thing, she's just throwing it at him and, and being very, very shady. And uh, I need to approve of people that are around him. You're the one that's bringing strange women and this, that. This bitch. Oh, I was so done with her. And then Ralph Angel's like in it. And he was actually shady to trend at this one point. And I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. but after he had his whole little conversation with Nova, he went back and you see my thumbnail. He actually went and he made it right with Trent and fixed that thing. That's right. Like I said, fix it with Trent. Go over there and have you one. Go knock her out, Penny. Get serious with Trent. Build something. The hell with that. Anyway. Anyway. So we got all that going on. That's going on with Ralph Angel. It's going to drive me crazy. I'm leaving that alone right now. We'll get back to it later because I got mad now. Okay, moving on. Nova has a friend that works at Environmental Services. And the friend was checking into some stuff about the Landers and all that. And they put in, they're still putting all the pieces together. And Charlie's like, that's fine. You know, thank you very much for the information. And I'll definitely be... I'm looking forward to speaking with your friend from Environmental Services, but I want you to kind of to lay back because I don't want you implement it in anything. I want you to implicate it rather in anything, and um, you know because you got a book to write, so I, I don't want this to touch you at all. So I need you not implicated. I need you to pull back. And she's like, "Okay, cool, no problem." Um, last thing, Vi. Vi went down and talked to Mr. Rawlins to tell him what she really wanted to do. She she likes what he had to offer, but she really wants to have her own kind of shop. She don't want to turn that much of her business over. And all of that. Just trying to see if they could come to some happy medium. And she got her whole business plan together. She got herself all dressed up all nice and she goes and she's ready to talk. And she has an episode. And it's very much that way with lupus. Um, it, no warning. It, it'll just get up on you and, and then you have these episodes and this is what she did. And she was so angry. She's so angry. Because you know, she was trying to hide it. Because she sees it as a weakness. And uh, she got, she had such an episode she couldn't even really drive herself home. Mr. Rollins drove her home. So she ended up coming out and telling him once they get to the house and everything she told him, listen, I do have lupus, but I'm managing, I'm managing it and this, that thing and the other. 
And he's like, okay, he says, well, thank you so much for sharing that with me, Vi. You know, I know that took very, a lot of bravery to even share that and everything. And she says, well, okay, so let me tell you what I was saying about the business. Because he had just said before that, you know, I hope you get well soon before she told me she had lupus. The investors are very, very anxious to get this done. So she's going to go explain to him what her stance is. And he tells her, well, no, 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 just hold on that. Just don't worry about it. Don't even worry about the investors in their rush and all that. Just chill out. Just hold on. Just get better and we'll deal with it. And I looked at Mr. Rollins and I said, you're not getting ready to backpedal and pussy pop, are you, Mr. Rollins? And I, I'm very worried. He looked very worried. So, I'm going to keep my ears open on this because I got a feeling that things with this business deal is getting ready to change because of Vi's health condition. So, I don't know. Kind of worried about that, but you guys tell me what you all think um, about that little situation. Did you, when you watched, did you get the sense that he was kind of worried or do you think he's getting ready to change his tune and um yeah leave it in the comments and then we'll talk about it and i will see you guys next week for the next episode of quitting sugar all right you guys later